Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbour's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbour, let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbour's eye. Remembering that the Word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of Scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Jean Skinner. Hello. Last weekend I was having a conversation with my son and we were talking about the easing of lockdown and easing of restrictions and I was asking him if he was planning to go into the office anytime soon. He lives in London and it's not so much the office environment that worries him but more the commute. He can't help but judge people um, in the situation that he finds himself in sometimes. Whilst many people are wearing masks and adhering to social distancing, there are quite a number who aren't and he gets a bit upset on the tube when people are not wearing a mask or social distancing. And he's always been a stickler for rules, even as a young child when we were playing board games you had to play by the rules it was no fun if you didn't he was very competitive and he liked the opportunity to win he acknowledges this about himself that he does sometimes judge people but he can't help it in some of the situations he finds himself and he's looking forward to the day when the restrictions about wearing masks are lifted because he says, then I won't worry about it. It won't be a rule anymore. We all have things that we can't help judging others for, whether it's the person who nips into the parking space ahead of you, or people who don't, cyclists who don't use the cycle lanes, or children making a noise in church. And I'm sure there are lots of things that annoy us. We all make value judgments. And we can't help it, however hard we try. So today's gospel is quite hard hitting 
and it often hits a nerve. It certainly does for me. Jesus is warning about judging others. William Shakespeare in his play Measure for Measure, which is based on the second verse of chapter 7, it's classified as a comedy and everything works out well in the end if you know the play, but it has some dark and disturbing parts. Angelo, a noble but very stern lord, is left in charge of Vienna while Vincentio, the duke, goes away. Well, he pretends to go away. He's actually nearby in disguise. Angelo takes charge and tightens up the laws and condemns a man, Claudio, to death because he has fathered a child out of wedlock. Claudio's sister appeals on his behalf, reminding Angelo that judgment from God is impartial and he may find himself in need of the mercy which God provides through Jesus. But Angelo refuses, but at the same time he loves Sister Isabella. His vice is eventually exposed and he pleads death that he feels he deserves. The Duke, an altogether more compassionate man, pardons all of them. Shakespeare hints throughout the Christian meaning of judgment and mercy. This is the mystery that lies underneath the present passage. Jesus warns against condemning others. We do need laws and rules in society to protect everyone and create a world where we can all live safely with each other. God intends that the world should be ordered and that injustice should be held in check. Jesus is not referring to the official laws or the law courts who administer justice to, for the evils that are perpetrated. But rather, he is referring to the judgments and condemnations that we impose on each other in our ordinary lives. When we set ourselves up as critics and moral guardians of each other, Jesus is targeting a particular group, of course, the scribes and the Pharisees, many of whom have the tendency to act like hardline pressure groups, creating a moral climate where everybody looked at everybody else to make sure they were all keeping their standards. And we can all fall short of people who set themselves up to judge others. Whether it's the bin police or looking to see if we've put the right bag in the right bin or whether we've parked our car in the wrong place. The list, of course, is endless. We all make mistakes and get things wrong and I'm sure there are times when we may have broken the rules. Jesus is saying, don't set yourself up as a judge. Yes, we can have high standards. And yes, we want to be safe and live in a world where people get along with each other. In order to do that, we have to try and be less judgmental, avoiding the temptation of setting ourselves up to play God. We're not the judge over others. Only God is our judge. And we so often feel that we have to do God's jo job for him. The warning from Jesus is a sober reminder that the people who are eager to condemn others are the very people who need to look in the mirror before they begin. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Father, help us to see more clearly. Take away all that gets in the way 
and blurs our vision. Lord, have mercy. Father, help us to see more honestly. See into our own hearts and minds, warts and all. Christ, have mercy. Father, help us to see more lovingly. To see all the good in others that we can find. Lord, have mercy. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, who gives patience and encouragement, help us to be less judgmental of others, so that we might live in harmony as we follow Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us all this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen.